decide how you're going to use multi-cloud. There are many approaches that you can take when you're adopting multi-cloud. The most popular happens to be a primary secondary approach. In this approach, what you're doing is you're sending 60, 70, 80% of your workloads to cloud provider A, and you're sending the rest to cloud provider B. 20, 30, 40% of your workloads will go to cloud provider B. What you've done here is you've satisfied essentially your risk department, you've diversified your risk, you're satisfying regulatory compliance requirements in some cases, because again, you're able to diversify your risk, you're able to reduce your lock-in, I guess, sort of. And this is an approach that's very popular amongst organizations and amongst customers that I've talked to. Now, another approach to multi-cloud would be a replicated multi-cloud approach. In this approach, what you're doing is you're replicating your assets from cloud provider A to cloud provider B. So let's say you have a database server and a web server on cloud provider A, then you're going to have the exact same workloads or servers on cloud provider B. So you'll have a web server or an application server and a database server on cloud provider B. Now, this is reducing you to the infrastructure as a service layer. This gives you high degrees of portability. It reduces your lock-in because again, you're dealing here with mostly containers, you're dealing with virtual machines, and you're dealing with data, which is relatively easy to replicate between cloud providers. So for scenarios like BCDR, this type of an approach works really well. For other scenarios like an active, active deployment, which not a lot of customers do, but I've seen some customers try to achieve this, where they have different cloud providers and they try to have the same workloads on both and have them both active. So now you have to deal with how you're going to replicate you know, your data across the databases and keep the data uh, synchronized. And it gets a little complicated in terms of the technical aspect, but it is technically doable. Not a lot of customers uh, do that, but it is possible. So for an active, active scenario of what if a cloud provider were to go offline, then sure, some type of an active, active here would work. Again, here you are reduced to the infrastructure as a service layer. Now, the other approach would be a distributed multi-cloud approach. In a distributed multi-cloud approach, you're essentially using best of breed. So you're using the best components from one cloud provider and the best components from another cloud provider. A good example here is the partnership that Microsoft and Oracle have, where they've interconnected their regions, giving you access to high bandwidth, low latency across these regions. And the idea is you can put all of your Oracle workloads on Oracle Cloud. For example, you could put your Exadata on Oracle Cloud and put everything else on Microsoft Azure and bada bing, bada boom, you've got the best of both worlds. There are other customers that have done similar things, but let's say they've used um, Amazon Redshift because they like the data warehousing capabilities of Redshift, but then they'll export the data and they'll use Azure Power BI to visualize the data. And again, they're using best of breed between uh, these two cloud providers. This type of an approach is becoming increasingly popular, still not as popular as the primary secondary approach, but it is definitely something that's worth looking into. Now, I mentioned these approaches because the depending on the approach that you're going to take. And yes, I know at some point in the future, as you mature in multi-cloud, you might have multiple approaches, not just one. But initially, at the onset of this, choosing one of these approaches will help you again, better make purchasing decisions, a better train, a better figure out how you're going to manage this environment. So decide on this early on.